you are looking at bags and bags of depleted lithium ion batteries. Batteries from electric cars, phones, scooters, laptops, tablets, cameras, you name it. They are flammable and toxic, so they can't end up in landfills. And believe it or not, these old batteries are still filled with materials that are as good as new. Batteries are amazing that way because the, the metals and the critical materials inside of them uh, are very highly recyclable. We recover 95, 98% of many of those critical materials like nickel and cobalt and, and copper. Essentially all of those metals are able to go back straight into reuse again and again. This is J.B. Straubel. He is a co-founder and longtime chief technology officer of Tesla. He was the mastermind behind many of Tesla's core technologies, particularly around the battery tech. He left Tesla in 2019 so he could focus on recycling all of these batteries. He gave CNBC an inside look at his startup Redwood Materials, where he is already recycling tons of batteries and sending some of the recovered materials to Panasonic so the battery maker can put them right back into Tesla's cars. We can't just take all these really great minerals and just dump them. That would be criminal. I mean, we have to reuse them. Straubel started thinking about this massive and growing problem long before he left Tesla. We started this, you know, because I saw this, this looming problem from the end-of-life vehicles that we were creating and starting to have a deep appreciation, you know, back then for the scale of what was coming and the fact that, you know, I didn't see anyone else getting ready for the scale of that problem. The sheer magnitude of, of the, the waste and scrap problem and the magnitude of batteries that, that need to get recycled is, I think, shocking to most people. There's, a, I think, a really exciting opportunity to link the recycling and solving the end-of-life problem with the supply chain solution, bringing more materials back into the feedstock so it doesn't bottleneck battery production. Batteries are indeed everywhere these days, and the demand for lithium-ion batteries has risen sharply in the past five years and is expected to grow from $44.2 billion in 2020 to $94.4 billion by 2025, mostly due to electric cars. EVs are expected to hit 10% of global passenger vehicle sales by 2025, rising to 58% of sales by 2040. Do we have enough materials to build all the EV batteries that are going to be required? Frankly, no, not right this second. We, we don't have enough materials um, in the supply chain to build everything today. So growth has to happen in the supply chain for all these vehicles. A lot more of that investment has to find its way to the top of the food chain to figure out you know, where these materials will come from, investing in new mines, refining, and recycling. We look at the materials that are in cells. These are metals that are very durable and we took a lot of effort to get them out of the ground. It's not like we have excess supply lying around that we can just pull to make cells from. Our excess supply is in the cells that are basically come to end of life and in the, are ready for recycling. So we would be really foolish if we didn't take advantage of the capacity of older cells to create the next generation. Panasonic says it produces two billion battery cells a year out of Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada. And it's specifically Model 3 and Model Y for the Tesla team. So it's only those two models in America that we support in this factory. So we need somewhere between 20 to 25 of these all over the world, but particularly here in the United States. We certainly need at least four, five, six of these factories to support the wider automotive industry. Batteries are made up of a mix of metals and minerals, including nickel, cobalt, lithium, graphite, and copper, that come from all over the world. Battery cells mined from raw materials often travel more than 20,000 nautical miles from mine to automaker, a supply chain that is far from sustainable. Recycling has a very big role to play in the sustainability of uh, electric vehicles themselves. One of the biggest sources of CO2 from an electric vehicle is from uh, the mining and manufacturing side of battery packs. Mining for lithium is not a very CO2 friendly activity. So there will be a time where recycling of batteries for the metals that it needs uh, is going to be a strong factor in uh, helping EVs achieve carbon neutrality. The materials in EV battery cells, for example, could have been mined in South America, Africa, Indonesia, and Australia. 
Then they are often sent to China for refining, and then in Tesla's case, sent to the US for cell production at Panasonic in Nevada at the Gigafactory. And a significant shortage of battery materials is looming in the near term for materials like lithium, nickel, cobalt, and copper. Right now, demand is outstripping supply five years down the road, correct? That's correct. How worried are you about it? Well, I, I am pretty worried that this could become a bottleneck to electrifying everything that people are hoping to do. You know, I think it's going to be a bit painful when, when all of these factories try and ramp at the same time. And recycling and, and being able to efficiently reuse those materials can relieve some of the burden on the need for new mines or finding new resources. The clunky supply chain also adds cost to the batteries, which are the most expensive part of an electric car. The cost of the electric vehicle is dropping, but it's still dominated by the cost of the battery. And within the battery, the biggest cost are the materials. It's a fairly direct link to say that the way to reduce further the cost of EVs so that more and more people can afford them is to figure out how we attack that material cost inside the lithium ion battery. And as the demand for electric cars continues to grow, you know, it's going to put more stress on those commodity markets. You know, but our goal is to, to find a way to, to decouple that and provide those materials for reuse at a lower cost. Redwood Materials is in the process of expanding and building new machinery to ramp capacity. Kevin Cassikert, another former Tesla employee, is helping oversee that effort. The first challenge the company faces is gathering all of the batteries. I like to think of the company in kind of three major uh, groups. One is really collecting and receiving, right, which is what you see here, and there's very safe ways that we do that. The other is more refining, so breaking the material down, taking it from its product that you see into its base metals, right, which are fully recoverable, and then building those back into battery grade products that we can sell back into the industry. But we currently receive about 60 tons a day, so it's about three semi trucks a day, and that's continuing to increase as we, as we grow the business. We'll go through this within a couple of months. Redwood recycles a wide range of lithium ion batteries, not just those that go into EVs. It gathers the materials through a series of partnerships with companies like Panasonic, e waste recycling giant ERI, and Envision AESC, which manufactures batteries for the Nissan LEAF. It also teamed up with Amazon. Amazon is an interesting partner because they have batteries in so many different areas of their business, you know, all the way from data centers with AWS to the consumer products with things like Kindle. We're discussing with them a number of different projects, but their reach and, and access into the consumer world could offer some really interesting opportunities. It's been interesting how some of our partners, you know, get, get quickly kind of overwhelmed by the problem that these old products can create. When these things pile up, they get to be really difficult to deal with. You can't just throw them in the landfill. You can't just shred them. It'll catch fire. Some partners have reached out to us in a little bit of, you know, panic, saying, geez, you know, we need to solve this problem. You know, can you help? But beyond its partners, Straubel said the largest lithium mine could be in the junk drawers of America. There's only, you know, so many geologic sources of a lot of these key materials. And, you know, for decades we've been, you know, digging it up and putting it in products and using it. And so many of these consumer products are just getting locked away, you know, stored in people's drawers, literally at home or in their garage or in a shoebox. And over time, you know, that collection of old consumer products stored up in people's proverbial drawer at home, you know, has become, I think, the world's largest, you know, resource of these materials. What do you think most people think? Do they think, I don't want to throw it in a landfill, but I don't know what to do with it? I do think there's a lot of confusion. There's concern about data. There's concern about just throwing it in the garbage. But there's a lot of barriers to productively recycling it. And the hurdle is so high right now that it encourages people to just do nothing, to hang on to it. But it is wasting a, an incredibly valuable opportunity and a resource that we can tap into. Consumers can help by dropping off their old electronics at places like Best Buy, Staples, Salvation Army, or at their local solid waste authority. Recyclers will pick them up and destroy the data before refurbishing them or extracting materials. Once Redwood receives the batteries, they are broken down and processed in massive machines. And this is one of the machines that we use to separate the different metals away from the batteries. It lets us very efficiently uh, separate nickel and cobalt away from things like lithium. The final product goes into these bins of raw materials, which will ship to manufacturers. Redwood's techniques recover more than 95% of a battery's nickel, cobalt, aluminum, graphite, and more than 80% of a battery's lithium. This is one of our finished uh, nickel products. So this is a mixed nickel sulfate product. And you can see 
packaged and ready to go, basically back into a battery cathode manufacture. This would be the type of product that you would ship back to Panasonic or to some other battery manufacturer. They can now use this. Exactly.